welcome back to Nature Dates with Dan and Jen Ayton. Hello. Would you like to explain what you do on YouTube? Comedy, food, acting, singing, mostly drunk. We're on a common, so there are going to be lots of dogs and lots of planes because we're in central London. Just bear with I'm that. I'm ecstatic through all of this. Yeah, let's go pick some dangerous looking berries. I have seen The Hunger Games yep. and I'm not 100% sure I trust you, but we'll, we'll try. I don't know what we're looking for. You said foraging and foraging. then berries and I yes. was like, great. So in terms of what we are looking for straight away, yeah. anything red. Because it's November, we've gone past the kind of blackberries, slows. Yes, there is wildlife out here. Yeah, that was a lot. Uh, <laughs> we've gone past like the slows, the damsons, uh, the blackberries, those kind of softer fruits, they're okay. more September, October. Right. Now we're into the more red berries that taste horrible when they're raw, but when cooked, they taste amazing. And red doesn't mean danger. Don't pick it just because it's red. Right. But we'll go towards the red things, work out what they are and work out whether they're toxic or not. Do you have any idea what that is? So it's called blackthorn, but the fruit has a different name. Blueberry? No. Is it a plum? No. Oh. It's a slow. Oh, I've Sl had slow You've gin. You've had slow gin, that's yeah. the thing. So slows come from the blackthorn plant. Right. Um, so there's blackthorns give you slows and hawthorns give you whores. <laughs> yeah, we can make this joke so many times in this video. It's great. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh God. You know what this plant is? The plants I know are the ones you can buy from Sainsbury's. You can buy this one from Sainsbury's. Imagine if that was a different Raspberry? colour. No. Blackberry. Yes. Which makes this a bramble. This is the thing with old foraging. It's like, it's so to do with like old English yeah. legends and things. And there's so much kind of folklore and mythology around all of these different plants and all the different plant names. Like hawthorn, I looked it up, means hedge thorn. Because haw is the old word for hedge, because obviously hawthorn you most commonly get in a hedge. And well, like, oh, you say obviously. Obviously, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't just see it in the middle of a field, a hawthorn tree. Got a little leaf oh, on your end you. there. I'd also just like to point out to the viewers at home one, we are underneath a very loud flight path. And two, it's very muddy and our poor camera woman is having to walk backwards through the mud. I always try and have good quality videos, but going outside is just really hard. It's dedication to art. It is. Yeah. yeah, if there's a sudden whoosh in the camera movement, poor old Mariana here. And if I'm is... cackling in the corner, you know <laughs> yeah, exactly what's right. happened. Good luck. Um, <laughs> this would have all been um, blackberries. Really? And do you think Entire thing. people would have come and plucked them? Yes. You can see all of these... All of those are old fruits. Are there any rules against picking these things? Like Yes, the number one rule yeah. for foraging is to be humble because you mustn't think, oh, I know what this is oh. and eat it. You have to be absolutely certain of what it is and to know your own limitations, otherwise you may die. And you try to only pick what you need and to pick widely rather than narrowly. So take a few from lots of different bushes uh -huh. rather than stripping an entire bush. Yeah, right, right, right. And just kind of spread it out. as he struggles to get through the thorns. Nice, it's nice to give people flowers. Well, there's a lot of nature in the way. So that is... Is that rose? It's rose, yeah. That's where the pollen is. Yeah. And simple roses, you can see that and it's just got a line of petals along the outside. Right. Whereas our ornamental roses have been bred to duplicate the layers of petals. What? This is so weird. So it's just a, maybe... That there is honeysuckle in November. I'm not used to the London climate. I was going to say, is this climate change? This is London. Oh, London's just This weird. is the urban heat island effect. Okay. So this is honeysuckle, which is a summer plant. You can imagine that you've got a bee or a butterfly with a long tongue that has to sit here <laughs> and get the nectar right at the bottom oh, of this trumpet. And in doing so, gets all the pollen yeah. on her head. So all the nectar is right at the bottom. So if you bite the bottom off, so it's hollow, and suck out the nectar, it tastes of honey. Yeah, it tastes like my candle smells. <laughs> well 
Love Life with Daniel J. Layton. Do you want to play poo sticks? Always. For those Americans that don't know, poo sticks is a game as in Winnie, Winnie the, the poo. poo. It's a competition to see whose stick manages to flow under the bridge first. There's no control oh. to this game. Oh no, that's so not true. There's no skill to this there game. There is skill no, to No, you this just game. throw it in. No, but there's flow rates are different across the stream. <laughs> and the shape of the thing you choose differs. Scientists. Yeah. Right, come on. Three, two, one, go. Oh, mine's that longer one in front of it. The one that Yay! won, yeah. Good gameplay, good yeah. gameplay. Join us next week on Poo Sticks Poo World Sticks Championships. Poo Sticks with Simon Page and Daniel J. Layton. What plant is this, Daniel J. Layton? You know this one. I'm only asking you the easy ones. I think that is an Oak. Yes! Does that look like an acorn to you? No, it does not. This isn't a spider egg, is it? It's not a spider egg. Okay, good. What is it? It's a wasp egg. <laughs> well, it's not really a wasp. It's, it's the home for a baby wasp, um, which has long gone. Um, I hate nature. Come back! Come back! I'm out! I'll be in Starbucks! <laughs> Bye, Dan! Do you know the way back through the wilderness? No! <laughs> So that's the hole where the wasp came out of, which is how I know that there's no longer a wasp in there. So it burrows into the top layer of the oak tree. Yeah. And the oak tree goes, oh my God, something's burrowed into me. I'd better seal it off in its own little capsules so it doesn't go any further. Yeah. And that's what this swelling is. So the wood is oak wood, but it's right. only growing in response to the, to the wasp growing inside. Where have all the fairies gone? I go walking so much in London. Yeah. Constantly seeing berries. I think. The oh, one day we come out the for. The one it. day I come looking for them. Zero. <laughs> something and I don't know what they are. I don't know enough, so I'm not going to pick them. The number That's one rule of foraging. Smart. Don't talk about foraging. That's the number <laughs> one rule of foraging. I see some red things. We finally found something. Do you know what this is, Daniel J. Layton? Obviously not. Do you know what you're wearing in your coat pocket? Microphone? A rose. Oh. <laughs> I, I have got a, a mic pack in my pocket. So these are rose hips. So this is the fruit of the rose flower. Careful, wait, I haven't told you what to pick yet. Pick the nice red ones. So the flower would have grown off this bit here. These are dog rose, um, which is our native rose. You'll see that there are seeds and hairs on the inside. Ugh. The hairs were actually used by schoolboys as itching powder. Uh, so we'll have to be careful um, not to eat these when we cook them up. But they're really high in vitamin C and they taste delicious. I have rose hip tea all the time at home. So you can see this tree has an awful lot of them on. So it's not like we're taking the last five rose hips off this one. Yeah, plant. responsible, fair foraging. Exactly. And because it's after, I think, the first frost, I assume we've had a frost here, um, the ice breaks open the cells and so these should be sweeter than if we'd picked them earlier in the season. I'm trapped. Ow! There are thorns on roses. Bloody nature. If there are thorns on them, they clearly don't want us to pick them. I love you, and I love you, and I love you. Ow! <laughs> oh, it's got me, it's got me! It's mad. It's like, oh, you could pick me, I'll pick you. There we go. Now, I really want to find some whores. Do you know where I can get some whores around here? Dan? Yeah, just down Putney Road, yeah, Putney High <laughs> Street of an evening, yeah, near the toy shop. And look, my sacrifice to the weather gods paid off. Yeah, thank God for that. If it was raining, I would have not <laughs> in any way come to play. So this is a hawthorn. Hey. <laughs> here are the thorns of the hawthorn, and here are the whores of the hawthorn. So these are also edible. Great. Put them in the bag. Yeah, I will. And we're looking for more of these. But you can see when I squeeze into this that they have pretty large seed inside. So that's the fleshy bit and that's the seedy bit. But can you imagine like if 
nearly all of your food came from foraging, how many calories you would burn just to get your food? Yeah, These but I've got a really nice gym. <laughs> These are holly berries. Guess what? We can't eat them. Correct. If I compare these to the hawthorn berries, they're actually quite similar. But the leaf is obviously incredibly recognisable. Yeah. There's nothing else that that could be. No, we love a holly leaf. So that is the outdoor bit done. Uh, I'll tuck it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most physical activity I've done in weeks. <laughs> it's a water out. All this it's nature. The smallest amount. So now we're going to go in a, a magic of cinema. We're going to go immediately to Dan's kitchen. And we are back in Dan's kitchen. A little coffee table. It's not a coffee, it's a kitchen table. Yeah, I just... We're around the kitchen we're table. We're around the table and now i just got to prep the halls and the hips. Probably explain. We're making jam. A little jam, mate. Yeah. We're having a jam. It takes at least 24 hours for jam to set. We didn't plan on that. <laughs> Remember, this is hot sugar. Yeah, I can tell that. It's going to be Especially really hot. It's going to be really hot. Cheers. Cheers to whores and hips. <laughs> My two favourite things <laughs> in the world. Is sensational. That is so sweet. That is delicious. <laughs> it's really good. It is. There's a floral aftertaste mm -hmm. in the mouth. Because you get that nice hit of sweetness mm -hmm. and it's really juicy. Mm -hmm. And then as it finishes, it leaves you with a little something else. That's delicious. That's the taste of the wilderness in your mouth. I could just go and get some jam and save this. I mean, that's kind of beside the point of this entire series. No, but what we, you've made me experience it. Yes. And now I know which bit I, I enjoy the most. <laughs> yeah. You coerced me, you dragged <laughs> me through the woods. So thank you very much for this nature date. It's a great day. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. It's quite all right. And uh, forcing a city boy into that, that's going to be the clickbait title. Really? City boy lost in the wild. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a movie full of balls and hips. <laughs> um, bye. I'm enjoying I'm another signing one. you yeah. off. <laughs> Bye-bye. Subscribe. I'll do, you know. <laughs>